come under tension. This is something that generally gets overlooked, and it can be quite challenging with a main with a big group. But chip away at it uh, definitely can um, be worth your while when educating athletes, especially when you get to work in smaller groups on what tempo means and and how it can impact their uh, training and their athlete development. Uh, but what I'll think about when I'm programming is thinking of how do I want to influence the stretch shortening cycle. So do we want to target more muscle development or do we want to t- challenge more tendon involvement? So an example would be if we're trying to get um, muscle hypertrophy, we're trying to build size, build bulk on the athlete, build their body armor. Then as you can see here, depending on the tempo that you prescribe, you could you could program 12 reps. Always remember that it is GPP, not sport specific. So understand when to pull back. If if you're absolutely um, overworking an athlete, they're super fatigued and the actual football training is, is uh, negatively affected towards that, then you need to make sure that you're um, programming um, appropriate loads that's going to allow that athlete to perform with uh, their football training because that is their specific training that is where they're going to get the most amount of um, benefits from is by doing the football training so our work as strength conditioning physical preparation coaches is all general in that the transferability there are there may be some we're not we're not it's hard to actually prove that there that there definitely there definitively is we know that it, it potentially can make uh, life easier for a footballer when they're fit when they're strong, when they're powerful, when they're fast. Replace a deload week week with an intro week a, apart from grand final and combine, for example. So deload week can be quite a dangerous term. It's also like things like you know, um, you, you're educating the athlete that you know, this week doesn't matter as much potentially. Um, we're just freshening up, things like that. We want to watch, uh, be mindful with the, with the words that you use. I think if you call it an intro week instead, majority of the time, so we're introducing new exercises in this week. And that's why we've reduced the volume, we've reduced the intensity because we're getting used to those new movements. So it, yes, we know from a physical point of view, it's still a deload week. But from the athlete's perspective, there's no such thing as a deload week. It's actually just an intro week. So they're still excited. They're still feeling like, oh, we're getting better. We're striving towards improvement. Whereas if a deload week, there's a, there's a potential perspective, perception um, that this is a time where I can just relax. Um, you know, I can switch off. Flip your sets and, and reps when it comes to accumulation block. So typically when you're looking at programs, you'll see three sets is probably the most commonly programmed. And if someone's working on strength, they'll do five reps. If they're working on power, they'll do three. If they're working on hypertrophy, they'll do 12. When we're in the off season and we want to focus on our accumulation block and we want a really strong strength and power stimulus, I'll flip those sets and reps. The like I just mentioned before, rather than doing three sets of five, it's five sets of three. Rather than doing three sets of 12, it's 12 sets of three. Okay, so you're still getting 36 reps, but the intensity of the athlete can lift that, both from movement, but also percentage of their 1RM is going to be far greater. So the total tonnage that you're lifting, which is your the weight that you've got on the bar times the reps that you perform in that uh, session is going to be a hell of a lot higher the um, technique of every rep is going to be much greater because you're you're moving, um, you know, is not as much density. You don't have to follow the program to be fluid, adjust to suit the athlete. So, and this is where Bruce Lee, be water, my friend, is really applicable. At times, we can spend so much time and energy on our programming that we become too rigid when we're then uh, facilitating that session. Rarely will I have the planned session, particularly when it comes to field-based training, and I won't adjust it. It might be the times that I'm asking an athlete to run those 100-meter tempo efforts at. It might be um, the amount of time we've spent on uh, doing agility work. You might progress it. They're absolutely crushing that movement. They're understanding what we're trying to get out of it from a technical point of view. So you change the drill. You progress them to the next agility, change the direction of the drill. It might be some sprinting mechanics that are working on and you're doing one and two switches and they're nailing it. So you progress to a triple switch or they're on the wall and they're the first time coaching them, young athletes and their uh, ankle stiffness and hip locks, fantastic on the wall. So you progress them to the dowel stick overhead, whatever it might be, you're constantly trying to progress or regress them to where they are that day. 